Greetings friends, grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St Luke's Uniting Church in Highton. Can I extend a particular greeting to you if you're watching this from a nursing home, perhaps with a limit on those who can visit you. And also a greeting to you if you're watching this at home or maybe in a hospital bed and you're not doing too well at the moment, you're feeling a bit crook. We do value the, uh, the feedback we get uh, in relation to these videos. We take it seriously and we'd love to find out, and we love to find out who's watching the video and where you're watching it from. So if you would like to, you can use the resources that are available in terms of contact details at the end of this video or on our congregational website to get in touch with us. In this video, we will explore a key aspect of Jesus' teaching about the way of God and the way God works in the world. And we will hear the radically hopeful words of Paul that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We move now to a time of prayer. Some elements of the prayers that we're praying today are drawn from the writings of Jonathan Fleming and his original prayers can be found on the Church of Scotland website. Let's pray. Loving God, wherever we are as we share in this service, we come seeking to hear your word for us, and we come seeking to offer to you our worship and praise for all you are for us. For indeed, nothing can separate us from you. Lord, as we think about our lives, we seek your forgiveness for the times when we have overlooked your presence and the calling to your way of love. We confess the times when we choose not to look, not to look out for those in need, not to look for glimpses of your glory, not to share good news with others. May your Holy Spirit reinvigorate us. Assure us that we are a forgiven people. And may we be open to the opportunities that come each moment to live life in a vibrant way the way which reflects the way of Jesus. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, selected verses from the New Revised Standard Translation. If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring it any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 to 33, from the New Revised Standard Version. The Parable of the Mustard Seed Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come 
and make nests in its branches. The parable of the yeast. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Have you been one of those people that's had a bit of a go at baking bread during this time of COVID-19? Early on, like many people, I had a bit of a go at trying to bake some sourdough bread. Now I have to admit that I had quite a number of failed experiments before I ended up with a loaf that was reasonable. But you know, right there there's a lesson, isn't there? That sometimes we really have to learn from our mistakes before we cre can create something that goes well. And rather sadly, too many times I've heard people in church meetings say, well, we tried something once some years ago and it didn't work out, so we never did it again. Now, if I'd followed that kind of thinking when it came to baking sourdough bread, I would have never ended up with that reasonable loaf that, that the family enjoyed. But I digress, because the focus that I want to take today has to do with that parable of Jesus in which he's talking about yeast. Now, I reckon yeast is something that's quite amazing. You only need a very small amount of it to do something that uh, does something amazing to a batch of dough. So you just have a small ball of dough in the bottom of a bowl. You cover it up and you put it somewhere warm. And then the yeast gets to work, doesn't it? And two hours later, three hours later, the, um, the dough has risen and filled the bowl completely. And then, of course, all we have to do is pop it in a hot oven for a half an hour or so, and out it comes. This, this wonderful stuff of life, bread. And isn't there something special about smelling fresh bread, tasting fresh bread? It's a real sensory experience. Now, as you heard, Jesus told the crowd that the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Now, I need to make a couple of explanatory comments about this particular parable. First of all, three measures is a lot of flour. Some clever person has worked out that if you made bread from three measures of flour, you could feed a hundred people. The second thing that I have to say relates to this phrase, the kingdom of heaven, which in other gospels is often translated as the kingdom of God. Now, this shouldn't be thought of in terms of something that's always in the future, the kingdom of heaven, something that's before us, perhaps after we've died. The kingdom of heaven also has to do with the signs of the presence of God in the here and now. And in these days so impacted by the pandemic, I, I suspect many are wondering perhaps that includes you, where is God in the here and now? Where is God in the midst of this pandemic? That kind of questioning was no doubt true also in Jesus' day. For many of the Jewish people of that era, they wanted God to show up right now and get rid of the Romans, get rid of the oppression that they were under. And no doubt they were calling out for God to act, to rise up a Messiah. And no doubt they asked, where is God that we're under the heel of these Romans? And the Romans themselves, of course, well, they knew where the divine was. The divine was on their side. They could point to the extent of their empire, to the power of their legions, to their wealth and their cities and their laws and say, well, God's clearly with us. But the point of this parable of Jesus is that something that seems so small, so inconsequential, can make a big difference, can be the way of God. The Romans of the first century would have not thought it possible that one man who wandered around teaching 
in an out-of-the-way part of the empire, Palestine, and who they had executed by the shameful means of crucifixion could make any difference at all to their world. But we know that he and his followers did make a difference. Jesus did change the world. And as Paul so profoundly declares in those soaring words from his letter to the Romans that we heard Beth read earlier, through his life, his death, his resurrection, this person, Jesus, has declared the mind-boggling impact of the love of God, that nothing can overcome this love of God, not death or life or the dark and evil things of this world, no catastrophe, no disease, no corrupt regime, nothing in all the cosmos, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So as we look for God in these days of COVID-19, let us remember this simple and yet incredibly powerful teaching of Jesus, this teaching of the parable of the yeast. And so look for God in the apparently small things, the small things that change the world. Expressions of love, care and respect. A sense of hope. Moments of grace, of undeserved favour, the wonder and beauty of a flower, a smile or a prayer, a song that stills anxieties. People who put their own wants and needs aside for the sake of others. Where is God? Right there, sisters and brothers, in the everyday things of life the everyday things of life that reflect the love of God poured out in Jesus. For those things that are apparently small can change the world. Jesus told them this parable, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Earlier in Romans chapter 8, from the section that we heard Beth read for us, Paul writes about the way the Holy Spirit can aid us in prayer. Uh, he says in verse 26 that the very Spirit intercedes for us with signs too deep for words. In these days of COVID-19, sometimes it's really hard to know what we should pray. But the promise here is that the Holy Spirit will aid us in prayer, that the Spirit will intercede for us when we struggle for appropriate thoughts and words. And with this promise before us, let us come before God with our prayers of intercession. Let's pray. Loving God, Holy One and Holy Three, mere words are not enough to express how grateful we are that nothing, angels, dark forces, death, life, nothing can separate us from your love. We pray this day for all who struggle to affirm your presence amongst us. And you know we all struggle with faith at times. Indeed, help us all to acknowledge your presence and grace in all of our living, even in the smallest of things, even in the smallest act of kindness. Open our eyes, O Lord, and our hearts to you and your love. And may you continue to sustain all who seek to make you known across our world. We also pray for all who seek to make a difference in the lives of others. We pray for carers and counsellors, medics and mediators, those with listening ears and those with caring hands, those having to make hard decisions in these days of the pandemic, those offering care at the risk of the at risk to their own lives. We pray for those who are too acquainted with isolation, suffering, pain, human fragility and the nearness of death. Bring healing and hope. Bless those researchers working tirelessly to find a cure and a vaccine for the plague that currently inflicts our world. Be with us all as we struggle through each day, wondering when all this will end. 
God of justice and peace, we pray for all who seek to challenge injustices and stand up for that which is right. We pray for politicians and protesters. May your path of wisdom and ethic of love of others guide those who govern. And now in silence, we seek your spirit's leading as we offer the prayers of our hearts for the needs of others close to us and far away. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Take care in this coming week, brothers and sisters. Be aware that the smallest act of kindness can reflect the love of God. So be thankful for kindness offered to you and for opportunities to share kindness. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, Rest and remain with you all, both now and always. Amen.